Hello and welcome. Today I'll be doing a review on the Not Not Gauge LMS Pug. Now this pug is made by Dapple. I'm not quite sure if that's how we pronounce it, but correct me if I'm wrong. But this is a really nice model, which I bought second hand off eBay for £21, as I plan to paint the buffer beams. Wait, a, uh, uh, or maybe repaint all of it in the LMS maroon livery because I'm yet to find locomotive, uh, a pug locomotive in that livery yet I think it would look really nice having a little locomotive like this in a maroon livery for those of you who don't know what the maroon livery is I've got a fowler at the back here I'll just bring over that's the uh, LMS maroon livery. I think it's called maroon. It looks really nice. It's got a combination of black, like a dark red, and a almost like a gold slash yellow, yellow tinge, pin stripe in that goes around the edges of the wheels and around the cap. If they were to do a pug. Backman, Home, uh, Home B, or any other company, if they were to do a pug like this in that livery, I think they'd be on to a top seller there. Because I'd definitely buy a couple of them, just the simple fact of that, that livery just looks smart, presentable. It's, it's a very really nice, lovable livery. A really grand livery. We have this dark little black with white lettering and numbers. No, it's, it's too plain, in my opinion. But I don't know, it's it's black, it's plain, it's dark, it's a dirty colour. I know it was only used for shunting and marshalling in yards and putting trucks together. And, uh, that's probably why this is in a bit of a dark colour. Just dark uh, livery, just plain blacks and everything. And whereas this one was at the front of the the steam age, if you would. Pulling the pasture trains, the being at the main front of the what's the word? Being at the front of the public side. That was the public image. But I think this was just a little background character, so it didn't really matter about this so much. But no, I reckon they should have a a nice little livery. Put it in the comments below if you reckon uh, this should be painted in that livery. Or should it just be left as it is because, I don't know, it's a, it's a nice, nice livery but not the best. Anyway, let's get down to a little bit of the tacky bits. This is a nice little 040 locomotive. It was mainly used in shunting yards, dock sides and maybe uh, steel works due to the small wheels which were really fine small little dinky things and it was also on a tight chassis which meant they could go around a lot tighter curves which you'd find in a dock or steel works whereas a big engine like this or two seconds then we find a, a slightly bigger O4 this is just a this is an O4 uh, O4 o Hornby little uh, Railways cheapy locomotive. It's a nice little locomotive. 040. If you look at the wheel arrangement on this one compared to the pug, there's a big difference in the size of the wheels and the space between them. Which means this 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 locomotive would be okay on uh, small uh, branch lines yards, stuff like that. 
Uh, I'm gonna take the track. This is obviously the better one. Now, I've been after a uh, small little pug like this one for a while. I'll just put that back there. Now, uh, I've been after one, but never, uh, never seem to have got hold of a cheapish one until now. Glad I bought this one. I did. It's been about forty pound, brand new, around somewhere around that price. I bought this twenty one pound, and uh, very weird. For one thing, I don't like though, is the fact of the pistons. You got the piston and the whole connecting rod set up, but it's covered. I don't know if you can see. I like just get the camera zoom. It's got a bit of a cover over the piston and the connecting rods. I don't like that. Yes, the real loco the real steel locomotive of this in real life did have covers over them to protect them from debris and uh, stuff like that. But some of them did have them taken off. Some of them just didn't have them full uh, full stop to start with. But I, I don't like it. It takes away the character, uh, characteristics of the engine, in my opinion. I'd rather see nice connecting uh, rods and pistons like that than like that. But a friend of mine did uh, say to me that once you get the locomotive, these little bits from the downwards can come off. So you can remove them apparently and uh, take them off and you do have a full piston set up behind it apparently. So I'm just going to quickly put the camera down and see if I can get it off. Be right back. Right so I'm back, finally got a little piece off, a little fidgety. It's one of those little fidgety jobs which is worth doing. If the camera decides to focus today. Come on, focus. In my opinion, that does look a, a miles better. <coughs> Pardon me. But it, it was a bit fidgety too. And I, I definitely recommend, if you're going to do it, to use some really fine uh, tweezers or nose uh, really thin nose pliers or something because it is a quite a fidgety little piece to get off. It's held on by like four little clips which are I don't know if you can see it I'll try and get them right in there which are on the edge of the actual piston <laughs> now they are a little bit of a pain to get off as I've just discovered and these are these little plastic bits you get off. Are quite detailed, but my camera is a little rubbish for the zoom, so I can't really show you. But I don't know if you can see that roughly. But it does have uh, three hinges and a little latch on it, so it does look like a little bit of a toolbox, which would be good to put on a maybe like a little shunting wagon or a little flat car somewhere or something. So you could actually make use of this of these small little parts you get off. So I, I'm just going to keep that off for now because it's a little bit fidgety to put on. So I'm just going to check it over here. And uh, yeah, this is a very nice model, a really smooth runner, which you, you uh, I'll show you in a minute. So I yeah, highly recommend getting one of these. It's a weird thing about it. It's never the motor being a flat little one in there by the way which goes vertical and then goes onto a bit of a gear it actually stands up in the back by you in the cab which you could easily hide that if you put a little bit of a like some work figures in there or something but it's a really nice detailed model for what it is it must have been really hard for them to try and do because it's so small but 
I think that's enough from me talking now. I'll show you it shunting as it should be. So I'll uh, be back in a minute when it's everything set up. So I'm back, the points are set. I don't know how we'll run because this track does need a bit of a clean. As I recently put down all this, uh, I call this uh, grassy stuff, all this scenery stuff, and it has made the tracks a little bit uh, grubby. But uh, we'll see if he works now. And obviously, uh, a review on an LMS locomotive, shunt in, wouldn't be complete without some LMS trucks. So, uh, be with me and we'll get him shunt in. Extremely smooth motor system today. Now that is extremely smooth and quiet. Let's see if I can uh, pull off. Well, that's a really nice sounding motor. It's not too rough, it's not too sluggish. It's a nice slow control speed, which a shunter should be. So yeah, that's a really nice long locomotive. It looks a little bit out of scale compared to the... Well, not out of scale, but it looks a little bit small compared to the Fowler at the back. <laughs> and the trucks. But hey, it's a nice little model. Quite happy with that. So, I'll just change the points. Put them in the side in. Points all changed. Ah, he died on me. Come on, no, don't die. Come on. Alright, now as we've witnessed twice by it. Which isn't a fault of the locomotive itself. It's more to do with the way that the track is powered. Because obviously in the real world, they don't power, they ain't powered from the track. From the track itself. They're powered by steam. But these models are powered using electric from the track. Which means, well, when you add that, the fact it's powered by the track, to the fact it's got really tight axles on it, so it's really close together. When you come to a dead space on uh, these dead bits on the points, <coughs> sorry, when you come to the dead space, but uh, you've got to give it a lot of power, otherwise it dies, which is just died. So I'll give it a little bit of a nudge, see if I can get it going. Come on. Nope. Ah. Ah, ah, it's going. But yeah, it's quite a smooth little locomotive. Highly recommend it. So, uh, thanks for watching. Comment and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you reckon they should have one of these. Not no gauge pugs. In the maroon livery, like this. Or, if it looks better, with the piston and connecting rods out. Let me just go around. Or with them covered. So drop a comment below. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you again with more videos. Ciao.